Hi, everybody. Uh, really interesting with all the bright lights here. I'm a Bart Reed. I'm the executive director of a nonprofit based in San Fernando Valley called the Transit Coalition. Transit Coalition deals with land use planning, mobility, and goods movement. And the Santa Clarita Valley has all these things. For those that may not know my history, at one point in time, there was a developer in the Santa Clarita Valley that wanted to put housing development on the top of the 5 and the 14 that was called Los Lomas. It would have made the bad trip to Los Angeles or to the San Fernando Valley even worse. The guy lived in the world of magical thinking and all of his projects, we finally unraveled everything. Everything was going to be financed by the homeowners. So you have a, a mellow ruse of $500,000 and a house of $500,000 because he didn't want to pay for anything. Um, it took a couple years between Mitch Englander from City of Los Angeles, future council member, myself, members of the City of Santa Clarita Council, and we put that project to bed, um, but it took a while. In the meantime, we've always, Transit Coalition has been dealing with transportation issues and connectivity between the Santa Clarita Valley and the San Fernando Valley. As Barbara mentioned, there's lots of people. I used to notice every Saturday morning there was dozens and dozens of people that would gather waiting for the Metrolink train to come up to Santa Clarita because maybe 30 people had jobs working at uh, Magic Mountain and they had to get to work. They were able to get home because they would carpool with one another. And then more recently at a Christmas party that I went to with Barbara, the one of the, the guests I started talking to said, He's got a factory that he runs and manages up here in probably in one of the business sections of Santa Clarita. And he's got some odd shifts. One of the shifts goes from 2 p.m. to um, 10 p.m. And his second shift goes from 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. They have an interesting company, an American classic industry. They build, they, they take glass, they cut it to size. If you order it by 2 p.m., you can get your glass delivery the next day. So that's Los Angeles-based jobs. It Santa Clarita-based jobs. They pay well because it requires skill to do this glass cutting. And it requires employees that can do a, a skilled labor. But what I found was that, again, there was transportation issues. If a lot of the employees, because of the odd shifts and all, they would use carpooling to get to work. And if the driver was sick, then two other people, A, they couldn't get to work, the company couldn't turn out the product, and they all lost days of wages because they couldn't get to work. So transportation is an important issue to the economy of the Santa Clarita Valley. It's important because the Santa Clarita Valley is, I believe, the second largest employment um, area in Los Angeles County. There's a lot of productivity up here, and it's not good to hurt productivity. There's, there's other companies up here, such as uh, Princess Cruises, which is a national company that starts selling cruises at 6 in the morning, so they can ca be calling people at 9, p 9 a.m. on the East Coast. But again, the type of workers that have to get to work at, at Princess Cruises, they need to be able to get transit to get up to sit the, their, you know, the facilities near City Hall. They need to, be, need to be able to get up here at 6, 5.30, 6, 6.30, or 7.00. The earliest Metrolink train that comes from Los Angeles to the Santa Clarita Valley arrives about 7.05, and then by the time you take the bus from the train station and all, you can get to your local jobs around here about 7.30, 7.40, in time for an 8 o'clock job. doesn't do well when you're trying to get revenue in the city and people need to be at work at 6, 6.30, or 7. And that's the same at, at other places like Advanced Bionics up in Rye Canyon, second site, some of the Al Man companies. People have very early shift work up here and they need to be able to get to work. So in the story that Barbara mentioned, uh, many years ago, maybe five, seven years ago, we worked as an unmet transit need to get a bus service between the San Fernando Valley and the Santa Clarita Valley because, as I mentioned earlier, the train service doesn't come northbound early enough and then there would be people other stories, 
people would be working jobs in places like fast food, but they would have to leave their job at 5 p.m. because the last train back at the point in time was at 6 or so. So they needed to be able to get back to the train station to get home. All these things hurt the economy. The idea, if you want to have somebody who is paying taxes, gainfully employed, and all, sometimes they depend upon transportation to get back and forth. If you don't have it, then there's other dire things that happen to the economy, and we really don't really want to uh, be moving in that area. So back to the uh, bus route that was created. It was created from a, a grant, and the grant lasted for a couple of years. And then the recession hit in 2008, and around that time, the bus service actually was doing okay. It had enough riders. Because of the grant, they actually weren't charging enough money but they had riders. And the city of Santa Clarita had wanted to try a transit service between Santa Clarita Valley and the North Hollywood Metrolink station. And so they, one day, uh, two months before the council went on vacation, which was for two months, they timed their uh, cutting of the service to the uh, vacation of the council. And they left everybody pretty much without transportation. And they started this new service. Uh, I knew people that were working at jobs up here where they had to be to work at 6.30 or 7. Guy had to get up to now. He lived in Pacoima. He had to get up. He had to take a, bu a bus from Pacoima down to North Hollywood for the first bus out at 5.45 a.m. to get up here by 6.15 to get to his job by 6.30. So he was getting up at 3.34 in the morning because the city changed what they were providing. And it ended up not doing well for everybody at all. But the bus to North Hollywood is actually working real well. And now the, the big issue then becomes what could be done to fulfill unmet needs? And the other day when I spoke to um, one of the fellows from Santa Clarita Transit, he says, well, I've never gotten a phone call. Nobody's ever called and asked for anything from the Santa Clarita Valley to the North San Fernando Valley or something from the North San Fernando Valley to Santa Clarita. So in my discussions with Barbara and some of the other folks, the idea would be, what if we put out the word, we can help the economy, we can do good by the educational community, the medical community, all the different communities, and we can fulfill an unmet need. And so that is the one reason that I'm, I'm here tonight, is to talk about the potential. There, there is a Santa Clarita route that potentially could be expanded and extended down into the San Fernando Valley with the right amount of fare, the fare box recovery can be fairly close. Um, Metro, and this is another thing, with the community asking, because you all pay the one and a half cent sales tax, uh, Supervisor Antonovich is sympathetic to the fact is if there is an expression of need from the community, not from me, a transit advocate, but from the community, you folks in the audience here, and say, you know, we've got a, a brother, a cousin, a sister, they need to get to uh, all of you hospital for services. They need to get down to the Veterans Hospital and in or other facilities, or they need to get to Mission College. They need to get to Cal State Northridge. Well, if the transit service were fixed, we could offer it. It isn't um, something that couldn't happen if there was enough community support from Santa Clarita and on the other side, the city of Los Angeles and San Fernando. Metro would have to chip in the appropriate amount of money since most of the service extension, as you can see from the map in the bottom of your stack, the service extension pretty much is from the Newhall Metrolink station. And once it gets on the freeway, it leaves Santa Clarita territory and becomes Los Angeles, city of Los Angeles. And that means Metro would have to chip in the money to pay for a balance of the service subsidy. And if the fare is priced right, the subsidy won't be real terrible but we'll start meeting the needs, needs of the community. So that's uh, a little bit of explanation about um, the bus service. And I'll talk about the train service, too. Um, it's the same type of situation here. A lot of people don't love sitting on the 5 or the 14 to get into the Los Angeles Basin. I think Barbara's daughter, what time does your daughter leave at 4 or 5 in the morning to get to her job at 7? 5 a.m to sit on the freeway for an hour and a half to get to the um, Wilshire Boulevard and the 405 to potentially, well, to get to work. But 
half of her life, two hours each way, is spent in transportation. Um, I found, because the 405 is so hideous, that I was working with world airports to fix some of the flyaway bus services, and I found that if I left Silmar at 7 a.m. for a 10 o'clock meeting, I could get there for three hours. If I left at 8, I would get there after 11 for the 10 o'clock meeting. So I found that if I got on the Metrolink train at 8.15, got downtown at 8.50, took a flyaway bus at 9 o'clock, I'd get to the meeting at 9.25. I had time to stop for breakfast and walk over to the 10 o'clock meeting because sometimes the straightest way isn't the direct way. Um, so as a result of um, all these different issues, I find that it's getting folks in the community interested whether it's for yourself, for your kids, for your grandparents or parents, for whoever it's for, there's always somebody that is in need of transportation. And the purpose of the speech is to help rectify some of those issues by asking the community to express interest or write some letters to the Santa Clarita Council. The Santa Clarita Council expressed an interest in some of these improvements, they can, they'll, they'll now go with some of the other cities, the city of Los Angeles, the city of San Fernando, the city of Glendale, the city of Burbank. And if there's an expression of interest, Mike Antonovich will turn and say, Los Angeles, Santa, the North County, Palmdale, Lancaster, Santa Clarita, it needs its fair share. We're not getting our, our share. Um, add in some extra service. We found, as I mentioned earlier, the first train gets north up into Santa Clarita at 7.05, but we really need a train that gets up here much earlier by six or so, so you can get to the jobs. Even Palmdale, Lancaster, the sheriff shifts go on at six, six o'clock in the morning at Mira Loma. The first train doesn't get to, to Palmdale until around eight. So the important thing is, can we make these changes, help the economy, and do good by the community so we have mobility for everybody? The same thing even with the Dodger games. We had some train service that would leave it late at night, but because it isn't a regular train service, people ended up having to drive rather than, say, going to a ball game. Uh, at the same time, where there is regular service to Orange County, people use the train to go to the Angels all the time. Uh, with those, some of those uh, matters illustrated, um, Metrolink is soon to have a brand new station at Bob Hope Airport. Again, do you want to battle the freeway? If you have a flight that leaves at 10 a.m., do you have to leave at 7.30 or 8 to make that 10 a.m. flight at Bob Hope Airport? Um, if there's a train service, you know that the train is leaving at, at uh, 8.15, you'll be down there at 8.45, you can take a shuttle bus over to Bob Hope Airport, stand in line and not have any kind of uh, concern or worry because everything works. Uh, there are also, in January of this coming year, there's going to be a brand new station on the Antelope Valley line at Hollywood Way. That station is there, but what happens is if the train comes with a two-hour gap here, a two-hour gap there, and these big gaps in service, the problem is that you really want to know that the train leaves at 8.15, 9.15, 10 10.15, once an hour on a clock headway, rather than having to figure out if this is the hour that it skips or the two hour it skips or whatever, and the same thing coming back. So the goal is to ask, get some of the folks in this room to ask city council members, get the word of mouth in the community, that there's an expression of interest that we want Metrolink to fill in the service gaps. There's three midday gaps going to Los Angeles, there's two coming back from Los Angeles, and if those gaps can be filled, then again, it lets people have a, a more dependable service. Uh, those, some of the, you may remember there was this midnight proposal to put up uh, billboards. How many remember that? You know, there was a big petition. There was all sorts of activity. Well, the folks from the Santa Clarita area came down to Metro, but again, they had to worry about all these train schedules because there wasn't any kind of clock or predictable headway. So they might have testified at 1130 and the train coming back is at 155. It doesn't really help if you have a day where you want to come back and do some work. 
So those are just some of the issues that I see between the missing services in Metrolink, the missing services in Santa Clarita Transit. And in the material that I handed out, you all have on the top here a map. And you can see in the map this yellow, greenish yellow, is where there's a gap between the Santa Clarita Valley and the San Fernando Valley. And as you can see down lower, the Silmar Metrolink hub and all of you hospital or to have good transportation where people can um, get on buses like the, the 734 bus, they can take one bus and get over to uh, the Veterans Hospital. Uh, they can take and, and get to different places like Providence Holy Cross. But the issue is how do you get there from the Santa Clarita Valley? If the trains don't leave at the right time, you get stuck or you can't come back. So with those kinds of concerns that we're documenting, turning this over, we took a look at one of the existing services, which is the 4 and the 14 line, and we said what would happen if we potentially extended it from this, the New Hall Metrolink station, took it south to the freeway, ran express to Silmar, got off by all of you hospital, stopped there, went back down to Foothill Boulevard and over Hubbard to the San Fernando Metrolink station where it connects in with all the connecting transit. And you're able to then have services and goods that you need. People that have jobs up in Silmar but live in the Santa Clarita Valley then would have the flexibility and the connections to work late. And those that need to go to places like Mission College or Cal State Northridge would have the connectivity to do so. So we illustrated this with this map. And then on the um, back side, there was another map simply showing the miles um, from Santa Clarita from the New Hall train station to Olive View Hospital. And on the other side, you can see from Olive View Hospital over to uh, the train station. It's about 11.8 miles. 11.9 miles, and it's just a gap. So what we've done is we've prepared a letter, and this is a template letter. Um, I don't remember when we first wrote these. Marsha McLean has been uh, pro tem, mayor, um, different, and council member, so I don't know what she is currently because I don't remember. She's pro, She's pro tem right now. Is that Sandra? Um, um, so we have two letters here. On one side, there's a letter that explains a little about the bus connectivity between the two valleys and making some recommendations and asking for either an expression of interest from the city council or a council resolution. And again, the goal of this is to bring this to the attention of Supervisor Antonovich, and he will bring a motion to the Metro Board that the Metro subsidize the service in the Los Angeles side. So the city of Santa Clarita residents actually don't end up really footing the bill. Metro foots the bill, but you pay the sales tax one and a half percent every time you buy something. So you're actually entitled to something that's there. It just has to be asked for. And Supervisor Antonovich is amenable to connecting this area to the mainland, so to speak. On the other side, is a letter documenting the different issues with the train services with the different gaps. For example, World Airports has I, I forget, the bad, there's about 54,000 badges, people that work for different entities at the airport, including TSA workers that need to be at work at 5, 5.30 or 6 a.m. And the second shift starts at 2 p.m. And the idea is if trains leave early enough from Santa Clarita, we don't have a train that leaves early enough, so if you have a 6 o'clock shift, the flyaway bus start, it runs 24 hours from Union Station, so you could leave at 4, 4.30 a.m. from Union Station to get to your job at World Airport, but you need a train that gets you there so you can get to your jobs. The subways start running at 4.30 in the morning, for people that need to get distributed to their jobs in different parts of the city. The light rail starts running at 4.30 in the morning. But the trains need to have an equivalent service so we can have a seamless connection throughout. And the people that need 
that need this connectivity will have it. So the second letter, it's the same concept here, is that you would take this letter and personalize it or go back to your organizations and simply make a copy or I can provide a copy. My contact information is on both sides of this letter here, my phone numbers, uh, websites, everything is here. And we just want to see if there's an expression of interest and this is where we have to start. It's always the local community, it's always the grassroots, and if the grassroots want something, then Supervisor Antonovich is very good about listening to those kinds of issues. I, I will segue for a second to high-speed rail and there's been some interesting developments there. For those that may or may not know, looking at the one of these maps here, you can see the green line, which is Metrolink. Metrolink is coming up from Silmar and coming out to the point where it turns and comes out towards where we are now. And the reality here is if there's no station up in Santa Clarita, why does the route have to even come up to Santa Clarita, uh, based on community concerns all along the route out here, um, a suggestion was made that what if we took the train from, from Palmdale and had it go straight down to Burbank, and if you do that, then we don't have all the worrisome issues in this community going through liquefaction at Ellesmere Canyon, and the, the simple message is as long as people are for the alternative route, which is shorter, from Palmdale to Burbank, or vice versa, then that solves problems in this community too. I went to some of the community meetings, I talked to some of the engineers, and they said it was just as simple or even simpler to build the train from Burbank to Palmdale directly and avoid all the technical issues, the earthquake, and all the other stability issues in this area, and it becomes a win for this community. But the idea is to be for something before the alternative. The, the support from the community means that the high-speed rail board will listen and something will be fixed. So that touches based on high-speed rail. I should ask if there's any questions, because I think I've covered the things I'd like to tonight. Is there any questions at this point? Thank you, sir. Question, all right. Go ahead. Oh, we gotta wait for the microphone. Testing. Uh, good question, and I think, again, it's citizen advocacy. If you bring this up, and I don't know if there's any history, if you've brought this up with the folks that run Santa Clarita Transit through City Hall or through one of your council members, if there's a concern, your answer is that perhaps your solution is right there, but a lot of times if nobody mentions the solution, the bus drivers may know the solution, you may know the solution, 
but nobody's brought it forth to the folks that could say, you're right, we could fix it. So I would encourage you to... I wrote letters two or three years ago. I went over to the place by McBean and do all rents, or district office over there, talk to them. Everybody said it was a great idea, but still it. But then, as soon as I turned my back on it, I guess it just arrived on it. So. Well, I have to say this. A lot of times, we have things that we like and we suggest. And then there's a change in personnel, there's a change in people. And that's one thing in government, there's always a consistency of change. I mean, we used to have a city council member that in Los Angeles who may find himself in jail soon. And we would bring up to him the possibility that we needed sidewalks in front of guide dogs of America so blind people could use the bus. It wasn't a terribly frightening type of excuse. We did a photographic documentation. We visited with the council people. And then we did, just like you, we did the follow-up. The person that was in charge couldn't find the illustrated letter that we sent them, a 10-page photographic report. And they called me a couple hours later and said, oh, yeah, that had been in a stack for two months, never opened, because that was the way that, that Council District 7 ran. They didn't really care about the public. The difference is now, last July, we had a brand new council member that took office. We presented to him. We met with him. And all of a sudden, it's been, came budget time this year. The difference was I asked what happened to our proposal, and there was a difference. And this is a, it's a subtle difference is he said our proposal was turned down. I said, that's actually good news. Not that I wanted it to be turned down. It actually meant that the proposal was submitted, it was in queue, and then again it's there to be turned down next year or the year after. But once something is in queue, it tends to get funded, as you mentioned, the uh, tree medians and all. So sometimes you have to be persistent with government. It's good to know that you did it three years ago. Those people are probably long retired or whatever. Uh, start with a council member that's sympathetic to this. Start with um, somebody with uh, the the Santa Clarita Transit staff, not the people that run the bus company itself, the contractor, but the folks that run it up in the facility. So that's the best thing is to either have a, a short illustrated uh, letter or a, a picture and know who you talk to and see and get them to promise a future appointment. That's always the way we work in government is if you don't get a future appointment, you can't do something. I mean, the other day, in my neighborhood, the street lights were on for four days or six days in a row, and I'd call the council office, and the guy that I work with is actually pretty good. But then last Thursday, I went to high-speed rail meeting of all things. That was the council member. I said, Felipe, the lights have been on our street for, for weeks. The next morning, the lights got fixed because he called up somebody from the head of Bureau of Street Services and probably um, nicely suggested that they fix things, but I noticed the next day things got fixed. It's the squeaky reel getting grease, and that's how government works. That's how citizens do things. I mean, it's the same thing with this, these guys that in the middle of the night wanted to put up those advertising signs. They didn't vet it with the community. They didn't explain any benefits. All of a sudden, everybody here found out the signs were going up in the middle of the night, literally, and started to have a, a petition drive, a ballot, a motions, getting on the ballot and all. And the sign people were just totally blindsided because for as far as them goes, why do we have to interact with the community? I said, you know, if you guys had taken this to the community and explained to people the benefits, what you could win, what you could lose, rather than having a couple council members trying to jam it down and it offended community sensibilities. And everything is about respecting community sensibilities, respecting the people in this room, because when your ideas are trampled upon, of course your back's going to get up and you're not going to go for something. So I hope I answered your question. A little bit long-winded, but I hope I answered it, sir. Thank you.